Hi guys, guess who's back? It's me again. I've been on uh, quite a long break from YouTube videos because I was somewhat busy preparing and creating a new, more corporate-oriented spring and spring boot course. And if you think that you or your company could benefit from it, you'll find the link down below. But I'd like to continue with my Friday 5-minute series. And I think there's been two great questions on Reddit in the past couple of weeks. And I'd like to give you some non-conventional answers to these questions. And the first one is Senior Java Guy getting swamped with new technologies, React, Angular, Docker, Spark, Kubernetes, Node.js. Is there an online place where I can do really good courses in these sort of things? Now, the answer I'd like to give is that you need to somewhat check your expectations. Because I think, as always, unfortunately in our industry, there's a huge divide between the hype wish list, something that companies want, and reality. Now, let me give you an example. When I look at my colleagues over the past 10 years or so, Git is never a problem. Everyone claims that Git is no problem. It's super easy. And the first non-trivial merge comes around or rebase comes around, and suddenly there's problems everywhere. SQL, databases. There's always, obviously, databases are always old school. No one uses them anymore. But then again, in every company I've worked with, there's always a relational database lurking around. And most Java developers are somewhat uncomfortable doing SQL statements that are more complex than select star from one, two, three tables with a joint statement in between. And you've got Spring Boot and the magic, even though people work with Spring Boot for years, they don't know what's going on. Same with Hibernate. Hibernate does everything secretly, magically, just inserts whatever it wants into the database. And now you have these same developers and suddenly they're expected to be have fundamental solid skills in Angular, in Docker, in Spark, in Kubernetes, in Node.js, which I think is absurd because there's no way that you're going to find that person in the real world. And with... Um, non-trivial project experience. I mean that you didn't just use Kubernetes to spawn off 100 pods with your string trim microservice because you were kind of scared uh, trimming uh, strings wouldn't scale. So you decided to wrap the string trim call inside an HTTP call, but real actual experience with Kubernetes in production environments. And what I hear from people, colleagues, freelancer colleagues, and the companies who do use Kubernetes, for example, they run into heavy problems during dev, during test, during production, and they actually spend 80 or 90% of the time not doing the business development, but actually fighting and wrestling with their infrastructure. So what I think is that, yes, you can probably fake your way through interviews, and it might be good to have a general look at some of these concepts, Docker, Kubernetes, Spark, whatever. But don't expect as a senior Java dev to just have a look at all these technologies for a week or so, and suddenly you can, you're professional. It's not going to happen. It's simply way too much. Not going to happen, even though companies might be putting it on their wish lists for new developers. Not going to happen. Right. Now, Let's have a look at the second question. Three books every developer should read. I think that, um, I mean, there's obviously a ton of books which are interesting to read, but then again, I won't give you a book answer because I think you should probably spend more time simply checking out code and reading that code. For example, you could go to GitHub, check out the Wicked Web Framework source code, even though you're not working with Wicked, and try to read through how Wicked, for example, renders an HTML page. It's an exercise in understanding foreign code and learning about new concepts. Same with Spring source code. Same with any library you want with your database connection pool, for example. And I find it much more interesting to find practical code where people actually solve real problems and you see how code looks like in the real world, apart from, or instead of rather, looking at books 
where people most often have uh, a theorize or a theory, and then I have like a small practical example, which doesn't really hold up to a real world project or the, the issues that come with a real world project. So um, have a look at GitHub, have a look at one of these libraries you're using, the favorite libraries you're using, and just read through the source code and see what you can make of the source code. And that's already my unconventional answer to these two questions. Check back next Friday for the next Friday 5 minutes episode. See you soon.